fear and love. The eyes of fear, once you put bigger locks on your door, buy guns, close yourself off. The eyes of love, instead, see all of us as one. back say to the beginning of this campaign as it was you're talking nearly a decade of work's gone into this and um, yeah originally it wasn't necessarily I knew that there was carp in there I used to poke fish it a lot back in the day my nan used to bring me down locally and I did notice over the years a few people dotting in and out of the place but no one really stayed and um, it was sort of luck of the draw me and a lad I knew from over my way, moved in recently, he was into carp fishing and we came over here just to have a look around. It's a, it's a big old place, it's, it's a, a lifetime of fishing in one lake. Big, big waterway, a real big challenge for anyone. So at the time having somebody who was like-minded who fancied the challenge as well was a bonus. So we both sort of set about and came down here. And I remember it quite well, actually. It was uh, just after open season started, I'd say it was uh, early July. We came down and we found the carp. The carp was spawning in one of the shallow runs of the lake. And there was probably between, I'd say between 30 and 50 carp that we'd spotted. And um, we thought we'd prime a spot nearby to that. And I mean, when I say prime, we both understood that getting fish to eat bait in a place this big that weren't exactly heavily fished was going to be hard work. So we, we was willing to put the graft in. We've come down with that day alone, I reckon it was probably between 60 and 70 kilos of bait. Waders, weed rakes, everything. And we waded out down into the shallows until we felt the drop off in the silt. Cleared the area with the weed rakes, which was basically um, like laser cuts of 12 mil sheet steel, 300 and, well, a foot long, doubled over. That must have weighed around about 12 kilos of chuck. A really, really heavy duty rakes that was sort of, that was digging through the weed, dig, digging through the silt, down into the sediment below. Cleared the area, primed it with all the uh, particles that we had uh, prepared. We, we uh, came to the conclusion pretty quick that actually buying particles at the time before the likes of monster particles and carbon baits had ever come around. Buying particles prepared for the, through any kind of tackle shop was just going to be too expensive. You, know, you, you couldn't comprehend the amount of bait we was putting in at that time. <laughs> vividly just hearing the left hand dog just blipping not not like it, it weren't a screaming take it weren't it didn't seem like a big run it was sort of intermittent beeps just over a period of time and eventually I, I sort of rose from my bed chair and looked and my rod was actually pulling down and springing off the alarm and landing back on it and that, that fish was that fish was motoring 
that fish was really, really motoring. That, that was my first boat on this place. Well, that fish, once I cleared the weed off, it was just over 26. An immaculate black common, very boxy, big shoulders, and a paddle that was just oh, it was phenomenal, the paddle was. You could understand why that fish fought well, and I've actually gone on to recapture that fish a couple of times. I uh, did a bit of research and um, had a bit of a dig around to how the fish had got in there and where there was potentially coming from and um, I came to an assumption that a lot of them was escapees from a fishery further upstream that hit, got hit heavy, really heavy in 2007 with some floods and mm, that fishery fed those fish pellet um, whether it's copen or aquastim, I'm not entirely sure, but it was basically high oil pellets. And uh, after realising that, I did put them into my mix, but we'll get onto that a bit, a bit later on to the story. Look, if we're going back now, the first season I fished there, we rotated a spot between me and my mate, and it worked out really well for us both. We both had unbelievable seasons, but quantity-wise anyway. As for the size of the fish, I think that season we, um, I had that 26, he had one just shy of 26 with different fish, both commons. Uh, there wasn't a lot of mirrors in the mix at the time, there really wasn't a lot of mirrors in the mix at the time. There was predominantly commons, a lot of 18, 19s up to sort of 21 loads and loads of high doubles to low 20 commons, but nothing big. Some of the, 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 like the underlying silt and the sediment in there isn't very, uh, it's got a lot of wasting off the river from over the years. It's, it's been used basically to filter the rivers. There isn't many, from my research, there's only one more pit system like this in the uh, Europe, and that's in Germany, on the River Rhine, which is another filtration system. But yeah, it's, uh, it's a dirty place. It's not for the faint-hearted, it really is, and it's, you can, there's all sorts of stuff that washes up in here, mate. Are you talking of, I've had sanitary towels, tampons in my lines. Uh, I found a big bag of dildos in there, which I'm sure will be in the video as well. There's all, all, all manner of shit washes up in this place. We uh, we got a base camp set up at this point, and this this base camp that we'd got set up was banging. I mean, it's actually where we're sitting right now, but I'm going back seven years now when we very very first started this um, idea of sort of not not your comfort fishing. This was as comfortable as it got. I mean, we didn't with the tide. playing it day by day. If I found the fish, that was great. If I hadn't, not a problem. And it wasn't, um, I was, I was, I'd say I was campaigning the place. I really was. I was putting a lot of time and a lot of my effort into it.
Just wait. 